Welcome to Founders Metropolitan Community Church. We are so glad that you are here to worship with us today. Along with our Sunday worship, Founders Metropolitan Community Church offers a rich assortment of personal and spiritual enrichment classes, a variety of activities, and a number of support groups to help us grow along the way. Don't forget to visit the information and welcome table in the courtyard today, or pick up one of the connection flyers to find out more. Please don't miss out on the information and announcements in your bulletin, which will make your connection with Founders more meaningful. Check out our website, mccla.org, and find us on Facebook. And join us in making Founders Metropolitan Community Church your one-stop spiritual portal. If this is your first Sunday at Founders, you are our guest, and we would like to extend an especially warm welcome. After today's worship service, please join us for refreshments in the courtyard. Visit the Welcome and Information Center and meet some new friends. We would love to hear your questions, give you a tour of the building, or serve you a cup of coffee. In just a few moments, the ushers will pass out the welcome tablets. We want everyone to sign in today and let us know how we can best serve you. If you are joining us online, we want to hear from you as well. Look for the check-in information on the homepage of our website and let us know that you are joining us. Founders Metropolitan Community Church is a place of diversity and welcome, a place of healing and acceptance, a place of deep spirituality and transformation, a place of joy and love. Welcome to Founders Metropolitan Community Church, Los Angeles.
On this day of Pentecost, we open our hearts and our minds to the presence and power of your Spirit, known to your people forever and by many names. So come, Holy Spirit. Come, Ruach Elohim, who guided our most ancient ancestors. Come, Sophia, Spirit of Wisdom. Come, Babylon, Spirit of Justice and Equality. Fill us and animate us and empower us to be your life alive in this world, a world that suffers today from natural disasters, especially in Nepal and Chile, and from the unspeakable violence and horror of war, especially in the Middle East, from inexcusable environmental disasters, that now plague the beautiful, pristine coasts of California. We need your peace. We need your power and wisdom. We need your gentleness and your sanity. And so we wait upon you now in the name of Jesus and for the sake of everything that is holy. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. I'm Reverend Elder Ken Martin, and it is my pleasure this morning to welcome you to worship at Founders Metropolitan Community Church here in the beautiful city of Los Angeles, California, and to welcome those who are worshiping with us this morning from all around the world. If you're worshiping here for the very first time, we want to extend an especially warm welcome to you. If you feel comfortable doing so and you are here for the first time, would you raise your hand for just a moment long enough? Quite a few people for the ushers to find you. They're going to give you some more information about the church and following this service. We hope that you will join everyone out in the courtyard for some refreshments and just give people an opportunity to welcome you and introduce themselves to you personally. We want to extend an especially warm welcome also to those who are worshiping with us this morning by the miracle and ministry of technology around the world. However you are joining us, if you will scroll down on that page, you will find a place where you can also register your attendance here and leave a comment for us if you would like to do that, and we hope that you will. This is a very busy church. I've only been here for a week now, but uh, this is a busy place, and um, if you take a look at the printed bulletin that was given you coming in today, you can see details about all the activities coming up in the life of this church in the next few weeks, and we hope that you will take this with you when you leave and avail yourself of all of this information just to be sure you don't miss out on anything that you might want to be a part of. And I want to just briefly briefly emphasize uh, a few announcements this morning. First of all, immediately following this service, there will be a forum sponsored by the MCC Office of Church Life and Health downstairs in the theater. You will be hearing much more about that in just uh, a moment. Also, this, um, this week, um, tomorrow at uh, 1 p.m., the third annual barbecue, backyard barbecue and fundraiser sponsored by young uh, professionals. There will be people in the courtyard with information about all of these events following um, the service today. And then this week on May 29th and 30th, there will be a special production of Becoming a Man and 127 Easy Steps. That will be taking place. It is a one-man show in the theater downstairs, and this is a benefit for LGBT youth. Pa Spirit will be holding a rummage sale on the front steps of the church this coming Saturday from 9 in the morning until 1 in the afternoon, and L.A. Pride is only three weeks away. There will be a, um, a special meeting this Wednesday here at the church in the Rosa Parks room at 10, uh, 2 p.m., For anyone who's interested in helping with the planning of the church's participation and pride this year, Uh, also today following the service, there will be people at tables in the courtyard where you can sign up either to help staff the church's booth at the festival or to march in the parade. And I believe there will also be an opportunity to uh, order t-shirts while you are there as well. Uh, As always, there will be no service here on Pride Sunday. 
June the 14th, there is an interfaith service uh, before the parade. But on Saturday, the 13th, at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, there will be a bilingual uh, worship service here. All the congregations of this church will be worshiping together at 5 o'clock, and we hope that you will come uh, and uh, support uh, all of these events. Um, in closing today, how do we feel about what happened in Ireland this week? If you had asked me what would be the first country in the world to embrace marriage equality by a popular vote, I don't think I would even have thought of Ireland. <laughs> but by a vote of 80% in favor, Ireland becomes the 21st country in the world to embrace marriage equality. Let's just pray that our Supreme Court will find some of the same wisdom uh, as they render their judgment, which will be coming down in the next uh, few weeks. Now it is my pleasure to introduce to you the chair of MCC's office, uh, the director of the of Office of Church Life and Health, um, to make a couple of special presentations and to share a little bit more about today's forum. Would you please give a founder MCC's welcome to Reverend Elder Tony Freeman. Tony. Well, good morning, Founders MCC. It is wonderful to be back with you, and it is my distinct pleasure to bring greetings and blessings from our moderator and your former pastor, the Reverend Elder Nancy Wilson, and the entire senior leadership team. We are holding you in prayer, particularly through this time of transition, and I just wanted you to know that we're sending, uh, they're sending their love, their blessings, and their prayers. So. Um, and also that the Council of Elders is also holding you up in prayer. Um, well, I was uh, really interested to see uh, Reverend Elder Ken Martin's um, sermon title. It said, uh, What Happens When the Spirit Comes? Do you know what happens when the Spirit comes, when the Spirit moves? I'll tell you what, one example of what happens. You get Reverend Elder Ken Martin to come out of retirement to be your gap pastor. <laughs> Oh, well, I'm so they just mentioned, Ken mentioned that uh, I'm going to be presenting a forum in the theater um, immediately following the service today, and it's not going to be a drama or a comedy, <laughs> I hope, and, uh, but I'm looking forward to seeing you there, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the whole process of transi from transition in ministry from a pastor to pastor, what that looks like all the way through. And, and so that everyone has the same information about that. And the reality is that in the absence of information, what happens? The imagination takes over, right? So that we'll all know and understand how the process works. And if you work the process, the process works. So I'll look forward to seeing you there and sharing much more about that um, immediately following the service. Now, MCC each year uh, gives a number of annual awards, and we solicit information and names and nominees from uh, different, you know, from people in our uh, churches, and then uh, we sit down and we go through all of those lists and see what comes rises to the top. And uh, Founders MCC is actually the recipient at, of two awards, people here at uh, Founders this morning. And uh, the uh, first award today that I'm going to be presenting is the Excellence in Technology Ministry Award. And this award is given to a church technology ministry that demonstrates excellence in the use of technology to further the vision and mission of MCC through their church or organization. And today it is my pleasure to present this to Founders Technology Team.
I just want to say that it's, it's just amazing to have this kind of a technology team that's able to do so many wonderful things. And um, last September, we had our network gathering here. And if you've never attended one, I want to encourage you to. But it was, it was groundbreaking. I mean, it was, it was amazing. Because of the technology here, we were able to include our brothers and sisters in Northern California and have them here with us virtually. And one of our pastors that felt so isolated over in Hawaii, when we were able to have him up on the screen and be part of this conference together with us. And that was all made able by the technology team here at Founders. The second award this morning is the Jennifer Justice and Carlo Chavez Young Adult Award. And this award is named for Carlos Chavez and Jennifer Justice, whose commitment to young adult leadership and inclusion in MCC has changed our denomination forever. The awards are given each year to young adults who demonstrate MCC's values and who show promise of future leadership in MCC. And I believe that we have a person in our midst that really does show that future promise and embodies the mission and vision and values of MCC. It is my distinct pleasure this morning to award this to Reverend Cademan Grace. God bless you. See you later. As we continue worshiping, would you please rise as you were able and turn to the people around you and uh, welcome each other. If you don't know each other, introduce yourselves and share the peace of Christ. This morning's scripture reading is taken from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21, from the New Revised Standard Version. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a loud wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, divided in tongues as a fire. Here among them, and it's on rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the Lord. Now there were devout Jews from every nation on the heaven of the Lord Jerusalem. And this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds and power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea 
and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young shall see visions, and your old shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire, and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. What happened on the day of Pentecost was actually the fulfillment of a remarkable promise that Jesus had made to his followers. He had told them that even his death would not separate him from them. He had told them that when he was gone, he would send a spirit, a sacred spirit, a holy spirit, a spirit that would live inside of them, would walk beside them, would inspire them and empower them. And he told them in the presence of this Spirit, they would feel the same closeness and intimacy with God that they had felt in his presence. So as we begin our celebration of Pentecost today, I want to ask if there's anyone here who might be able to relate to the people in this story. If there's anybody here who might be able to identify with the people in this story. Because remember, when the day of Pentecost began, this group of people were locked away in a tiny, confined little space. They were living in fear that their true identity might be discovered. They were a group of people who knew something, and inside their hearts and their minds it felt good to them. It felt meaningful and life-giving, but they were terrified 
that other people might find out about it. They were people who were afraid to go public with the truth of their lives because they thought if they hear just one little word and they associate that word with us, it's going to end up in persecution and rejection for us. And they felt powerless to do anything about that. And then something happened. God happened. The Spirit happened. And a voice came and said, I did not create you to live like this. And they recognized that voice. And they knew it was the same voice that had spoken to the Hebrew people when they were in slavery in Egypt and said, I didn't make you to be slaves. Come up out of there and be free. They knew it was the same voice that showed up in the misty morning of that hillside grave garden and spoke to Jesus and said, Come out of there. That place is about death. And you are all about life. And this day of Pentecost, that same voice shook the foundations of the place that they were locked up and hidden and said, you may be able to fool everybody else, but I know you're in there. (laughs) And how are you going to share this good news with anybody if you stay locked up in there? And you know what else? It's the same voice that came knocking on the door of your heart one day and said, I didn't create you to live in fear either. And I didn't create you to live pretending to be somebody other than who I made you so I wouldn't even recognize you and I'm the one that made you. The Spirit came and they weren't afraid anymore because they knew that day what all Christians later got to read in 2 Timothy 1.7, for God does not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now, it doesn't say we might not have a spirit of fear. It just says if we did, it didn't come from God. So you think we can relate to these people? Can we adapt? You think we have anything in common with these people? Pentecost is a story about spirit, and it is so important that it is written in wind and fire. It is so important that Pentecost is called the birthday of the Christian church. And it tells us that the church was born in an amazing and perplexing and utterly miraculous moment of total chaos and confusion. And that the disciples themselves were the birthday candles walking around with their hair on fire. (laughs) When the day of Pentecost began, these people were locked up in a tiny little room. They were only whispering the good news and only to each other. But by the end of the day, they were out in the streets. They were acting up. They were shouting the good news to anybody who would listen. So what happens when the Spirit comes? Well, from the very beginning, Christians understood what happened on the day of Pentecost to be a fulfillment of that prophecy from the ancient book of the Hebrew prophet Joel when he said, In these days I will pour out my Spirit and everybody is going to get to see visions and dream dreams. And so if we open our hearts and our lives to the wind and the fire, we're going to get to dream dreams. We're going to get to dream about a world that is shaped by the values that we learned from the birth and life and teachings and death and resurrection of Jesus. And we're going to get to see visions, visions that God shapes And then God offers to us, and if we accept them, then they shape us. They shape the kind of people we're going to be. They shape the kind of church we're going to create. What happens when the Spirit comes? Well, things change because fire and wind change things. The story of Pentecost gives us a vision of three particular things that change in the presence of the Spirit that I want to share briefly with you this morning. And the first one is communication. When the Spirit is present, people listen to each other, and they understand each other. At Pentecost, the Holy Spirit had to overcome cultural and ethnic and religious and tribal and nationalistic and linguistic, all kinds of barriers, just so that those people could speak to each other and understand each other. Sometimes, I'm a news junkie. I keep MSNBC on all the time, no matter what I'm doing. Sometimes when I listen to our world, it sounds like it's made up just of divided groups of people who are shouting back and forth at each other across deep canyons of misunderstanding. 
different religions and different races and different nationalities and different political parties and different genders and different age groups and sometimes parents and children and sometimes partners and spouses. Not being able or not being willing to listen to each other and understand each other is a source of immeasurable pain in this world, isn't it? It even happens in our churches, doesn't it? Sometimes individuals or groups of people get into conflict with each other and it escalates and before you know it, the whole community has been damaged. Next time that happens, stop everything. Invite the Spirit into the conversation and things will change. Because Pentecost teaches us that when the Spirit is present, people listen to each other. And they understand each other. So if that's true, I want to ask you a really important question. Since the majority of the people that we try to reach with what we think is this amazing message of MCC continue to think that the church really doesn't have anything important to say to them, is that because we really aren't saying anything that's important? Or is it because we haven't figured out how to say it in such a way that they can understand it? Where are all the people that we're trying to... Why are there empty seats in this place? Shouldn't all these seats be filled with people? Remember what happened at Pentecost? The disciples spoke in their own language, but the Spirit gave them power to speak in such a way that everybody there heard them and understood them in their language. See what happened there? The people outside the church were not required to try to figure out what it was that the church was trying to say. The church was given the responsibility to figure out how to say it in such a way that the people outside the church understood it and wanted to be part of it. I think that's so important, I want to say it in a different way. It's not the responsibility of the people in L.A. to try to figure out what you mean when you talk about unconditional love and radical inclusivity. It's our job to figure out how to say it in such a way that those people will understand it and not want to try to live without it. When the Spirit is present, people listen to each other, and they understand each other. There's one other thing about communication that Pentecost teaches us that I think is especially important to us, and it is this. When we hear people speaking our language, we know we're not alone. You know, of all the post-resurrection stories that we revisit at this time of the year, my favorite one is the story of the two disciples of Jesus walking back to their home in the village of Emmaus late in the afternoon of that first Easter day. And we're told that they were, they were grief-stricken and they were just devastated by what they had witnessed over that weekend. And somebody suddenly is walking along with them and it's Jesus, but they don't know it until they get home and he breaks bread and then they recognize him and realize he's been with them all along. But then he disappears. And that's usually where we end that story, but that's not the end of the story. You know what happened next? Even though it was late at night and they were exhausted, they got up and went all the way back to Jerusalem just to try to find some people who would understand when they told about what had happened to them. Isn't that why most of us are here this morning instead of in other churches? I want to be somewhere when I start telling my story, I want people's heads to start nodding. I want people to understand what I'm talking about. Every once in a while I hear somebody say, well, you know, there won't be much need for MCC much longer. There will always be a need for MCC. By the way, you know that by the end of the third century, the Christian church said those two men's names were Cleopas and Simon, and that they were, quote, two men who made their home together in the village of Emmaus, unquote. I'm just saying. <laughs> I think it's interesting that the first person Jesus appeared to after he was raised from the dead was a woman, and the last two people at the end of that day were two gay men who lived together in Emmaus. Makes you wonder what else the church might have been wrong about all these years, doesn't it? The second thing that changes when the Spirit comes is that diversity is honored and it is celebrated. It's hard for us even to imagine the racial tensions into which Christianity was born. The Greeks hated the Jews. The Jews hated the Samaritans. Everybody hated the Romans. And Jesus shocked his friends and his followers 
by being the first person we know anything about who treated everybody equally. Even after Pentecost, the early church had to struggle in order to break out of its very narrow ethnic and religious and cultural cradle. But all of that changed with one event that is recorded for us in the 10th chapter of the book of Acts. We're told in this story that there was a Gentile man named Cornelius, but he was a man of faith, and, and he prayed, and God heard his prayers, and, and, and God said to Cornelius, if you want answers to your questions, you need to go find Simon Peter. And Simon Peter at that time was in Joppa, and so Cornelius got some of his slaves together and said, go find this guy. And, and by the time they got to Joppa, it was about noon. It was very hot, and Peter had gone up, as was the custom, onto the roof of the house and was waiting for food to be prepared for him, and he fell into a trance. And when he was in this trance, he saw something like a sheet lowered down out of heaven by its four corners, and there were all kinds of four-footed creatures and reptiles and birds of the air, and he heard a voice saying, get up, Peter, and, and kill something and eat it. And Peter said, no, Lord, I have never eaten anything that is profane or unclean. Peter was a, a faithful, observant Jew, and he obeyed all of the dietary rules of Judaism. And then the voice said to him a second time, what God has made clean, you must not call unclean. And this happened three times, and then the thing was taken back up into heaven. Why do you think it happened three times? We never get it the first time, <laughs> do we? <laughs> and so the servants of Cornelius invite Peter to come back to their home, and, and he agrees to go with them. And when he gets there, he says, Now you do know that it is unlawful for me as a Jew to even visit with a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone profane or unclean. And then Peter began to speak to them and said, I understand that God shows no partiality. You realize how hard that was for Peter? He had to unbelieve everything he had believed all of his life. This offended every sensibility that he had ever had. But when the Spirit comes, diversity is honored and it is celebrated, and everybody is equal before God, and everybody else knows it. Amen. So when you hear anybody insisting that everybody has to be like them, or believe like them, or love like them, or worship like them, before you can be welcome in the family of God, just don't go there. Amen. Because the Spirit of God is not there. In MCC, we believe in a God who's big enough to just hold all of us, regardless of race or nationality or gender or orientation or anything else anybody's ever used to try to pretend that they were more important than somebody else. Because when the Spirit comes, our prejudices just fall away, and we realize that we, though we are many, we are one. We began by saying that the Spirit comes with wind and fire, and wind and fire change things. So the third thing that happens when the Spirit is present is transformation. The work of the Spirit in our lives and in the world is change. The work of the Spirit in the world is transformation. On the day of Pentecost, we saw a group of people who changed so dramatically from morning to evening that they weren't even recognizable as the same people. They changed from lives of fear to lives of power in one day. They were people that history would just have forgotten, and they ended up being people who changed the course of history forever because of one day. And that was all about one promise. The promise that the Spirit of God has the power to change things, to transform things, to heal things, and redeem things. We have a, a new vision statement in MCC that says we are transforming the world while we transform ourselves. Our faith statement in MCC says we are saved from lives of loneliness and despair. But when we're saved, that's just the beginning. Because all around us, there are still people living lives of loneliness and despair. And the Spirit who has the power to change that to create new lives in us. Doesn't ask much from us. 
just that we changed the world, beginning with ourselves. You know, in MCC, we have a kind of a mantra. I hear it everywhere I go. God loves you just the way you are. There's no truer statement ever made, but that's only half of a statement. The whole statement goes like this. God loves you just the way you are, but God loves you way too much to let you stay just the way you are. <laughs> if the Spirit hadn't started changing you yet, that can happen today. That can start right now. Because remember, the Apostle Paul says, I was saved, and I am saved, and I'm being saved. So salvation is not an event. It's a process. It's a journey that we are all on together here. To allow the Spirit to transform our lives, to use us to share this good news with the world. So, this is the birthday. of the, Happy birthday, church. This is the birthday of the Christian church. And God's gift to us is a spirit who comes to live inside of us, to change and transform us, and asks of us just that we change the world. Would you pray with me? Come, Holy Spirit, live in us that we might be the life of Christ alive. Amen.
celebrate our God's call to us to be responsible in our ministry to, to ourselves and to our community. We give of our time, talent, and our treasure. Please give as you are able. And we also have a second offering up front for our Helping Hands ministry. Pray with me. God, we give you praise and thank you for this blessing. Allow it to be utilized in the way in which you see fit to spread your love. Amen. Amen. Have a seat. So before we begin with the <coughs> prayer and the consecration, um, I want to invite our online viewers who are, who are watching that they can join along with us. You know, with, with, with bread and, 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 and a cup of unfermented juice or, or wine, 
whatever you feel comfortable with because you are part of our family and this communion table is not limited to this space but extends to wherever you are because spirit has no boundary. All right. And I'm gonna try to get to this because I don't know why but I'm kind of emotional. Really? So, really, yeah. <laughs> and those that know me, I cry even when a fly is swatted, so. Yeah. So, I want to remind you, you may or may not have noticed that when you came in, there are three poster boards in the back. I invite you that before you leave, I want you to write, how has the spirit, how has the spirit at, in, 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 compelled you to communicate, to experience diversity, and to live out transformation? Now, I think here in Los Angeles, well, hey, you don't have to go out to Los Angeles. Just right here in the multicultural uh, MCC Lo Los Angeles. Y CMF Fundadora de, la, de Los Angeles. Uh, aquí experimentamos con la transformación propia de Dios. And so if we allow ourselves, I want to, we want to hear from you. Write it down. So that spirit can be made manifest through the written, through the written word. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for the very presence of fire and wind. We give you thanks for the imprint of your divine and living word, which allows us to wake up day in and day out and know that we belong to you. That it is through this very spirit that allows us to go forward, not to live in the shadow of doubt or shame, but to live in the light of confidence and security. That this very table allows us to bring one and all together so that we can communicate how you love us and how that love is transmitted to others. How that diversity sees, goes beyond any human person can imagine and how the transformation is lived out day in and day out. We give you thanks for this table, the table that presents unity in so many forms, so that through you, we can be the spirit alive. In Christ's holy name we pray, amen and amen. Amen. This is our opportunity to receive from this table that Jesus set yes. and prepared and presented to the people who are in the room and the people who are not in the room, the people who were present and able to see, and the people who believed, even though they were never able to see yes. physically for themselves. So let yourself see with the eyes of the Spirit. Receive these gifts. These are the gifts of God yes. prepared for us. Jesus knew he had to surrender his will, and he did. And he allowed it to be God's way so that in the breaking of the bread, in the breaking of our lives, our bodies. We are made more powerful. All the gifts of God are poured out so that whatever language we're communicating in, it's transformed and it can be heard and received just in the frequency that the person listening yes. needs to hear. Yes. And he offered us the cup the cup of life, the cup of joy, the cup of suffering transformed, the cup of presence of the living spirit. So here we are receiving all these good gifts, all of us who are here now, whenever and wherever we are. These are ours to receive. We have only to open our hearts to ask and allow ourselves to receive all that God has for us so that we may be the hands and feet, the eyes, the heart, the presence of the living God for all those who come into our lives. So God, we pray for these, your elements, that you would bless each of these as gifts for us to transform our communication. We give you all that we have and all that we are to transform our diversity, our willingness, our unwillingness, we give it all to you, God, to allow ourselves to be made in your image, to be presented to the world, to be free 
of fear and confusion <laughs> and present now in your translation of us to the world. So we give you this place, this time, these elements, and allow it to be for us a celebration of our receiving all of who you are into our hearts to be fully alive in you. We thank you in all your precious names. Amen. Amen. So just want to remind you that here at, um, I wanted to say ECM Fundadora, Please. at MCC, Founders MCC, um, you know, we celebrate an open communion as we do in all MCCs all over the world. Here, you don't have to be a member of this church or of any church. That is the beauty of what Spirit does when the, not only are the doors open, but so are hearts and minds. So I invite you that when you are ready to come, the server will grab the host, will dip it in unfermented uh, fruit juice, grape juice, will place it on your tongue. Or if you wish to uh, take it and place it on your own tongue, you can do so, just let the server know. If you want no human intervention just between you and God, and that is okay, we're not gonna be offended, there will be consecrated elements to my left, your right. And um, if you're not ready, for whatever reason, maybe somewhere, someone along the line told you that you could not, it's all right. God will find you exactly where you are at. The acolytes and the servers, please come forward.
Yeah. 
that the work that Jesus began has been given to the church to finish. And since we are the church, it is our work to finish. And it is through the presence of the Spirit in our lives that we are empowered to be the life of Christ, still alive, still transforming the world. Amen. Amen. Go in peace.
So before you leave today, we wanted to take a moment and invite the cyclists who lead this week for the 8th Cycle Ride from San Francisco to LA to come forward and we're going to do a bus yeah. so, so this is Jonathan Carlisle. How many years have you been riding? Four years. This is his fourth year riding. Yes? And Joseph Harris, first year riding. So if you would be so kind to stretch out your hands and join me in blessing these riders. God, we know that you are all for us. And so we ask that as these members of MCC go out and get on their bicycles and ride hundreds and hundreds of miles to raise awareness, to raise money, to raise the truth that we still are a church and a world living with AIDS. We ask that that Holy Spirit that met the disciples in the upper room would be the same spirit that fuels their quads, their calves, their feet, their biceps, their lower backs, their minds, their spirits. Give them enough strength to do their own journey and even more so, so they can help along their brother and their sister along the journey with us. We ask that you bring them safe back to Los Angeles so we can celebrate their accomplishment <laughs> and give you all the honor and the glory in the end. Amen. that the forum will begin just as quickly as we can all assemble downstairs. It's time to go again, but as you go, again, remember, we have not just been to church, we are the church. And when the church is the church, it is nothing more or less or other than the presence of Christ through people. So go into the world now and be the church through the transforming love of your risen Christ. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you for joining us today. By participating with us online, you are an extension of this church's membership ministry. Wherever you are in the world, we are so excited to embrace you, to hear from you, and to pray for you. Please connect with us and interact with us by telephone, email, or social media. Be an angel amongst us by supporting this ministry through our donation link. With your help, we expand and reach a greater number of people with God's love through this ministry. We invite you to write to us so we can be in prayer and praise with you. You are a part of Founders Metropolitan Community Church. Email us directly, info at mccla.org. May God bless you.